uh, this is Hank Dizzy, AK the Joke Dealer. Hashtag pay teachers more money. And I'm rocking with Michelle C and Candid Kisses TV. It's the Jill of All Trades, Michelle C, AKA DJ Make a Move. She cute. Your host of Candid Kisses TV everywhere you need to be. And if you don't know by now, it's not your typical interview, y'all. Candy Kisses blown away. Candy Kisses TV for tomorrow today. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Man, throw that auto tool on that bitch. That you sound like Teddy Payne. Hi, this is Kim Cole, and you are rocking with Candy Kisses TV. It's your boy Talon, baby. Michelle and Candy Kisses TV. With my girl Michelle C. Don't take it personal. Bruh man from the fifth floor in the ATL chitty with Candy Kisses TV. What's up y'all? You're watching Candy Kisses TV. Where my whole girl Michelle. Hello there. Have you asked yourself what you're missing? I have. It's Candy Kisses TV. <laughs> Intro is fly. Oh what kind of budget you got over there, Michelle? <laughs> Boys, we are in the in the today. We are Man. in the I'm your girl, Michelle C, aka DJ, make a move the Jill of all trades, and I'm bringing you another banger like I always do. But right about the same time, I always got to threaten y'all a little bit, you know, because y'all be tripping. Subscribe now, I'm gonna tell you, Mama. And before we get into it, let me tell you something. I'm so serious, but I'm gonna let my fellow Aquarius sisters tell you how we get down. I don't want to fuck nobody up. No, 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 no. I don't want to fuck nobody up. I don't want to fuck nobody up. But I will. If I have, if I have, if I have to. Energy, you know what we need. We need. You know me. I'm Aquarius too. Don't, don't want to fuck nobody up. Hey, that's right. You better get all the runs up, down. Like, okay, okay. So I am bringing you another dope talent. Oh my god, this man has been ripping the stages all over. Been grinding for a long time, and he also is he's educated. He he educated nut. You hear me? Okay. So I am bringing you. Mr. Hang this and pew, 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 pew. Oh, Let's get into it. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. What's going on, Michelle? How are you, man? This I is am. amazing. This is good. Girl, look, this is good production. Okay. You know, I'm trying to razzle dazzle, you know. <laughs> okay. I like the level of this. This is on the level. Come on, man. Don't don't have me come in and get scheduled and get in here washing my face for no <laughs> half ass production. I like this. Oh no, we be on time. We be doing our thing. That's what Aquarius do, you know. Man, the Jill of all trades. Okay. I and is that. and is. That's so we're gonna keep your business yeah. just a little bit. That's the so. So I'm gonna ask you the first question I always ask people. What made you know that entertainment was the thing for you? I was a, I was a kid. So you know, my parents was partiers. Like my mother was a background dancer for Ike and Tina Turner in St. Louis. Wow. So when I grew up, we were Springfield, Massachusetts. My mother used to have after hour. Like mm -hmm. she worked at the bars and all of that stuff. But her and my father had after hours at our house. And we oh. were like the only little black family in the neighborhood kind of. And my father... Mm -hmm. Is an engineer, he did, you know, he, he just was handy. You know, he built a ventilation system, a full bar in our basement and soundproofed it. Wow. So they would have parties and I would be upstairs sleep, never knew, but I was a Michael Jackson kid. Like I was a kid, okay. uh, I was asthmatic, I was always sick. So I was a kid that I got to watch late night TV. Cause you know, if you give some kids some albuterol, some prednisone, they up, 
So I could okay. see where one o'clock. I'm watching all the Michael Jackson, all the late night stuff, and I started mimicking everything. Like I could do the whole doom, 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 and they would have me come down in my little footed pajamas. Yes. Mother, oh. she little footed pajamas. My mother be like, you can get some devil eggs and some chicken wings if you come mm-hmm. down here because my friends want to see you perform. Because I told them that, and I go down there and they be play the music and I mm-hmm. do all that. They be like, ah! And I didn't know what that was. Right. I didn't know what that energy was, but I enjoyed the the reaction. And then I did that fair reunions. My cousins be like, here they be like, and I was Henry. You know, I'm little Henry. You know what I mean? They call uh-huh. my father's Henry Senior. So they were like, little little Hank know how to do it. Mm-hmm. Little Hank, I knew all like all the new edition, all that, and I would just do it from the beginning to end. They be like, how does he know all that? And right. that was the first blink of, yo, you gonna be something in the entertainment business. You okay. have something to do with it because performing never bothered me. Mm. Like okay. I wasn't Easter speeches. You could they would people would come just to see me do my Easter speech because it would be so dramatic. I'm like in the rock moved, <laughs> and I wasn't a preacher kid. You know what I mean? Right, I was well, a, what you do. But I would give them all the nuances, animation. They'd be like, "That boy's something else. That boy's something else." And I would be. I would imitate everybody, the preachers, the de- everybody. Cousins come over. I could do mm-hmm. the uncle's voices. And they would be like, how does he do that? And I was like, uh <laughs> As long as people laugh and having a good time around me, I knew that was where I needed to be. Now, so it, it, may- it, it, it constantly called me. Now, you know, it, may, it just tickled me that you said your Easter speech because my... <laughs> My brother will never live this down. He got up there. My mom had been working with him for weeks and weeks and weeks. Hey, you got to get your Easter speech because it's just going to be your time to shine. That nigga got up there and I'm like, I forgot my Easter speech. And oh. Walked and got a stand ovation. Right. And they be like, well, get, hey, give it up. Come on, baby. Let him. Baby, baby. He did the best he could do. Okay. We just asked him to do the best they can do. We we had a level. I had a younger brother. Uh, my older brother didn't really go to church with us. But we were always competing against the preacher's kids. Mm, okay. So the, pastor, the pastor had like kids, grandkids, and he would just give them love all the time. But everybody else's kids, man. It was, so me, me and my brother, we were always coming through like any performances, anything mm-hmm. we had to do. We was just like, yo, we the Densons. This is what we do. Okay. All day. Oh, Drop the mic. Yo, keep your Easter eggs, Pastor. Keep your, keep all them. Keep your little gold coins, chocolate. Keep all that. We don't need that. Right. You know what I mean? So we we were like, was my brother played the drums? My brother was the mm. church drummer, and this okay. is the church. So it's, and, and, no, and, it's you know all the you know what I mean. He was nice. He was a he was actually a prodigy because he was playing at six seven. He was beating up wow. my father's bar stools. Like he got a lot of whoopings for that. We were just yeah. musically talented and inclined, and our parents didn't give us a. We didn't have a ceiling. They were like, "Do it." Now you they weren't going to put no money in it though. We didn't take no lessons or nothing. But they were now like, you, Do "When it. we get back, well, I'm, I'm gonna have to." Uh, before we get to the next thing, I got to ask you about the. Did you have any, Were you ever able to be backstage with Ike and Tina? No. So do you understand me? This is before I was born. Okay, got you. Okay. Yeah, this is old. This is before I was born. My older brother. He mm-hmm. says he remembers. Okay, so this is a story my mother told me, right? Okay. Mother don't make mother don't tell no lies, not about no fight. Mm. And she said, she said a couple of times, she said, this is how she said it. She said, Yeah, Ike with his little ass self, always jumping up in somebody's damn face. And I was like, was he little? She said he wasn't a big man. She no, said he was jumping up in people's faces. She said one time we was trying to do a show because there was some bookers in there. Mm-hmm. And the bookers was trying to, we was trying to get some more work. This nigga coming here, jumping on, driving up on Tina. We're like, no, nigga, you messing up our money. Now, we need to get out there and perform. And, and she told me, she said, she said they had pulled out knives. I was like, what? She said, yeah, we got tired of him. This girl was talented. She out there, stop, all that. She's like, no. I said, Did, I said, so let me, let me find out, Ma, that you the one that inspired the beat up limousine scene. Come on yes, Yes, sir. She said, "No, nah, we ain't doing this. We ain't Come doing on, this. Yeah. And my mother, we yo, she, play, she don't play no games. Like I've seen her smack people and beat <laughs> up ladies, drag. I see, like I've been. I was a little kid. She didn't care. She put me in the backseat of the car. Peanuts. Mm-hmm. You know when you little peanuts, you get a little soda. Put the peanuts in the soda. You the happiest kid. Maybe a Hershey bar. You ain't right. moving out that backseat. You and ain't my going there. And I hear like, bitch, did it smack? Who got it? Get in the car." 
Get that Monte Carlo and drive. We just okay. pull out. Like, did she beat up three people? Then I hear later, like, you know, they upstairs talking. D, you didn't have to do that to that lady. <laughs> Listen, Tina was my Tina and still is my girl. When you know, all the other, you know, kids at three, four years old, they singing Mary had a little line, baby. I was in there. What's love got to do? Right, right. Oh my shit. Right. Tell right. you. Baby, I didn't do any of that. Michael Jackson was my dude. So mm. if you said anything to me, they'd be like, sing something. I'd be like, you can we child. I, I would just hit it. They were like, where do you get these songs from? And Lou Ross, I had my father used to. Lou Rawls all the time. That was his dude. He was a track. Poof, hit that little wee. And Lou Rawls played every time. I was like, this song is forever. <laughs> you will never find. I was like, oh. Please find it because I'm sick of this song. <laughs> I was like, boo. I was like, dude, can we get out of the car now? Can we, can, can we get? If you had to hear, we knew that we were going on a long ride if we heard <laughs> Lou Rawls. At least six times. We were like, oh, we've been in the car a minute. <laughs> you know what song used to get on my nerves? And my sister-in-law played it till this day. That damn a lovely day. I'm like, I don't want to hear that song no more. I, oh. it's like, it really ain't that lovely no more. I just, I can't. <laughs> oh, just one look at you. Do -do -do. Oh, you, <laughs> you know, I only like that song when I had an edible. When I have an edible. <laughs> right. That's Whoa. what I and if I'm an ed look, I need two things: an edible and a rental car with insurance on it. Oh, because I ain't gonna smash up my car. Let, <laughs> let one look at you. I'll be man. Okay, yeah. well, moving on. Now, when was your first time? Like, what was your first time on stage? Like, do you even remember the first time? Yeah, my brother said. Well, my brother used to be. A, he's a big DJ. He used to be a big DJ in uh, between Boston, New York, Connecticut, and him and his boys used to do these shows. Where they used to bring the Def Jam comedians, early Def Jam, and okay. I, I was a funny dude, you know what I mean? Roasting clown, crack. We call it cracking in Massachusetts. We call it cracking what they call roasting here in Atlanta. And I was just nice with it. I'd just be like, "Eh, hey, what are you talking about? This is what? It, hey, this hit me like this. This is how your mom be all over me, huh?" Fingers mm -hmm. in. They were like, why are you talking about? I didn't care. I was just like, I'm, and I come in the room, blah, blah, blah. I, everybody was catching it. And my brother was like, you have so many animation, animated stories, but them New York dudes be late. Mm, okay. They be real late. They would be like, yo, we supposed to be, the show's supposed to start at nine. Them dudes would show up at 10 and mm. then be acting fun. You know, it was just like, so my brother, one time they were running late. People were getting antsy, asking for their money back. He's like, yo, I need you to just get up and just talk, do something. Just entertain, right? Yo, I did a little joke. It's a joke. It's called the York Peppermint Patty. And okay. it's like every time he's like, you know what? I'll be watching your Peppermint Patty commercials, but you don't ever watch that commercial when you high. And they're like, why? I said, because you just live out everything in reality. Like, you know, I'm smoking in blood. I'm high. Next thing you know, the little white lady come out. I mean, sensation of a York Peppermint Patty. And then she fly off of her credit score go up or something that white people get. And right. then I flipped it in. <laughs> and then I go, but put a black, put a Jamaican in there. They're going to be like, hey, this is a naggy puff. And the Puff Crew, this is our original selector. Rewind. Whoop, 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 whoop. And then I would do all that. And they'd be like, and then he's so high, he would forget. He'd be like, uh, every time I get the sensation of uh, mint with the chocolate on it, and mm -hmm. the producer get mad, he'd be like, damn it. He'd be like, hey, boy, I'm going to put a cop in your ass right here on national TV. And I would do the voice. Do poor right. reasons. I would do all that. Then I did a black. I'd be like, if you put a sister, a sister would be like, hey, well, my name is Keisha. Mm -hmm. Word, word. Like, every time I get the sensation of a Y'all sit your ass down. That's what I want my daddy. All right. And that was my first joke because I used to do act outs. Yeah. Comedy comedian people was talking about, yo, hey, yo, I didn't know you had all that in you. And I was like, yo, and that, I didn't know either. And then that was the that was that was the bite because it was like, yo, people were, and I was funnier than some of the New York dudes that came. So they were like, yo, why aren't you doing comedy? And I was yeah. like, how do you? Then I didn't know how you get paid. I was like, how do I get paid? That's a good question. Cause I look, I'm still learning that part. <laughs> yeah, cause my brother just gave me. You know, I just he just ran a tab. I, I was like, I can't. I don't need to drink Hennessy all night. That's how you get paid. Like oh, I didn't know God. how comedians get paid. I was like, I don't need liquor. I need money. Like I gotta go to work in the morning. Drink. Exactly. Yeah. So, but that's that was the first. And I, I Michelle, I shit you not first show. And then mm. from there it just. 
Were you like when you got up there? Were you nervous? Are you just like, oh, this is just like at the house? I don't care. Like I really, I really don't. You don't care. get no nerves at all. I get anxious. I'm one of them comedians that feel like if it's if it's a show, and put it like this, I've changed over the years. If my name ain't on the marquee and all that, I don't make it. But I make sure that I'm going. You're going to remember me, and I'm going to reset the energy in that whatever time I do. But if it's my show, I get anxious. I feel like nobody loves and does comedy like I do. So I'm always like, hurry up, man. What? And he, the person could be killing. I'm like, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, but like, I want to. Light, light, let's go. So that's why, you know, if you see me at some clubs and I just, I'm not getting up, it's because mm -hmm. it's not my show. And then when I, when I want to, when I want to go, mm -hmm. you, I'm going to be running the light because I'm going to be, it's a, it's an exchange of energy that I need. Mm. Most people be like, oh, I mean, I'm talented. I need that. That has been something that's been keeping me on this planet, keeping me moving in a positive direction my whole life. So I, yeah. I'm ready, and I don't get that nervous. Well, you blessed because I get I get nervous. Every, I don't. I'm more. I'm less nervous when I'm around people that I know. Yeah. But then when it's like a total room of strangers, and I'm up there by myself, when you when your crew can't come, I'm like, yeah. okay, man, I got to figure out what these niggas like. So I tell this to all the, the newer comedians, right? Mm -hmm. You get to do comedy. Not okay. everybody has it in them to get to do it. A lot of people say, oh, I want to do comedy. And a lot of people can hide behind a camera and do comedy. It's not the same. That stand up. Because I don't take away from anybody doing this social media. Right. Because I've hit viral videos, videos. But the thing is, that stand up, it's the first initial burst of energy. Talent told me this. Talent, okay. I was doing the Apollo Theater. Talent, and I knew these guys. Talent was like, yo, let's run over your set. And I told him about my set. He was like, you about to get booed. <laughs> I was like, what? But I knew... But it was an experience that I I had the experience because you don't experience rejection at this. You're never going to be prepared for the growth because you yeah. got to know that you you could not. You got to know what a bad set is. A lot of people don't know what a bad set is because everybody like, oh, you killed. No, you did it. <laughs> no, you did it. Horrible, right? <laughs> you seen it. You've been in the green room where they be like, oh, you did your thing. I like it. You be sitting back like. What set did you see? Because right, because you know in your heart, you know when you did good. Like yo, yo, you, you and that's you, all you, you, you know in your heart if you did good or not. That's all you need. So that feeling right there is what I gravitate to. Give me that feeling any day where I yeah. go out, I do my thing, and then if I know all my nuances hit and I come up with a new bit while I'm up there and I get a new tag or a new leg to a joke, oh, it's it's cooking. And that is what God bless you with. Like the fact that you could do. All this stuff you just did, right? Mm -hmm. The talking, you're doing the show. That's a gift. I've been on so many streams and they don't look like this. They don't, you sent me details. That's the energy. That's all inside you. And mm -hmm. it's another level to this. There's another level to what you're going to be able to do. You just got to get all that other stuff and that noise out of the way. And that's all it is. Comedy is just you move your noise, you find your voice. Nobody can't tell you nothing. That's the only thing I'm trying to figure out, even what that terminology means when they say find your voice. Because I i don't even know what that, I don't know. Does that mean to find your groove? What is it like? No, you go, you win, no matter what it is, you're going to be, um, you're going to be you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. okay, prime example, Ali Sadiq is the prime example of a comedian that's, that does not change who he is or what he does oh. for <laughs> any room. And I've been on, like, I've been, I'm blessed to have, like, my boys, Rodney Perry, George Wallace, mm -hmm. you know, Caroline Race, some, even some, some of the white comedians are my people. And right. when I'm talking to them, they are organically them. Not the person that's on every time you're talking to them, telling jokes for no reason, but it's your conversation. The yes. way I talk all the time is the, that's what people see me go up for energy because I'm mm -hmm. not invested in this conversation. And I don't people understand it. If you live a little bit, I don't invest my good energy in people. They be like, well, you, I saw you destroy there. How come mm -hmm. you don't? Because I'm, I wasn't invested in that. Gotcha. Like I, I knew I wasn't going to get what I re was supposed to get from it. So why mm -hmm. am I throwing myself out and do all that? I'm not, that's not, but you come to a Hank Denson show. That's my show. You'll be like, oh, I didn't know that. Hour 15, hour 20, bye, 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 bye. You laughing. But anywhere else, I'm like, these is reps. It's just like you threw me a basketball. But your voice, the more and more you get uncomfortable, and I'm mm -hmm. talking about when you know, like, oh, God, it feel like in the pit of your stomach, 
but you still get up, you just mm-hmm. jumped another level. Oh, well, then that's every day then. Yeah. <laughs> every day. Yo, you go, and it becomes a muscle memory. Yeah. Because yeah. With anything, like you doing, you do it enough, you could close your eyes and do it. And what happens is in that room, you challenge yourself. So you'll be like, oh, yeah, somebody say something smart because, you know, we in this business where somebody be like, oh, they ain't that funny. I don't know why. They... And then you'll be like, oh, let me heat this bitch up. Let me cook this yeah. real quick. And you're going to get there. It's just the reps, the time, and that uncomfortable feeling. Go after it. Don't be scared of it. Go after it. Somebody say, hey, you want to do my show? Be like, yup. See, I ain't never turning down no show. My thing is, like I said, like you said, the energy is very important. Yeah. So, like, you know, you might go to these open mics and there might be like five people in that room. Yeah. And it's like people are like, oh, that's easy to like, it's not really easy. And when you have some a room of that small, because right. you can see every little eye and you can see every little judgment. And that's when you'd be like, all you right. You need I'm that gonna- though. You need that. Like, I've done so many rooms in uncomfortable places, right? Okay. And, you know, people are like, there was a thing, it, there, there's, there's a thing where you just hit this mark where you're going to reset the room anyways. And that's mm-hmm. a lot of people who you say really funny. Like, you got an array of people, right? You got different levels of comedy. And then you got one person that can come in the middle of it and reset the room. You can't, you can't, you can't forget that joke. JJ yes. from the SIP is one of those people. Yes, there's a Lord. dude, there's a white dude. Um, Bob Marley is one of them people. There's a couple of people when they come in the room, they reset the room and you can't you can't go there again. Mm. You 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 know what other people are gonna be funny and they go, you're gonna remember them, but that person resets the room. And mm-hmm. that's the part where, like, I'll give you this. Anytime you get on the stage, you don't know where to start because your crowd, if you just say, if you love yourself, give yourself a round of applause. That is your first thing out of your mouth to mm-hmm. them that's going to give you a response. Got you. Don't, you know, don't address how many people you did this. I look like this. You look like this. I'm happy to be here. If you love yourself, give yourself a round of applause. Yeah, I know. Cause I love me and go into your set and mm-hmm. just, just da, 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 da. And the first initial, I call it bars. Most comedians, is your first bars, which is your premise, your tags, and then your punchline, that mm-hmm. is the first joke you do in its entirety. Just, yeah. just do it in its entirety because it's going to give you a uh, cadence, which is your rhythm. Mm-hmm. And that's when you fall into, this is who I am. I got you. Yeah. Okay, look, I'm, take, I'm taking notes. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know I'm, I'm one thing they, the, the, some of the young cats call me the professor, because mm-hmm. it's not, but it's not about, I, I'm, I study it. And yeah. I'm not, I'm not, it's comedy is an amazing thing because it touches everything. Yes. I really people love you. Oh, anything. oh, it touches so much stuff, Michelle. And people be like, oh, no, I want to blow up. I'm like, yo, you going to get there. But mm-hmm. dude, imagine the, the conversations and the, the experiences you're going to get on the way there. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, I've been told a long time, like, why you, you know, who was the first person to tell me to get on stage? And I'm just like, I don't know. Alton Walker, he was like, what do you, get on stage. I was like. All right. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's you know the stage is one thing, but it's gonna get you set for this because you don't know what this turns into. Absolutely. Absolutely. This turns into oh, I got a show. Then I got, I'm doing live events. Then I'm hosting events. You gotta go out there and be like smack, smack, smack. They be like, oh, I didn't know she did all that. Yes. And mm-hmm. give me my check. I take my check. Okay, all of them. I don't want just one. I want oh, all of them. Uh-huh. You, I, I got my deposit. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, that far. Now, when did you know that you were a good writer? Because as a comedian, you know, you have to write. So when did um, you know that you was just dope with that? A um, couple of people I, I just gave tags to. Like, okay. I would give tags to cats. And then I did it more. I did it more in Massachusetts, or like up north, than I did it here. Okay. Um, but well, no, because the, the last couple of years, I would say the last seven years, I was able to pin some stuff for commercials, some other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I do some writing segments for some other shows. Um, okay. you know, and comedians, we sit out like a lot of comedians when, when they get ready to do a show where it has to be commercially sound mm-hmm. and they're trying to get marketing. Um, I go with a lot of comedians and take their set apart. And I don't change who what their voice is, but I give them the marketability and the transparency so that that joke transcends through a color. There's no there's no black, there's no white. You can't see black in the joke. You can just hear your voice and you see the joke. And that's where a lot of a lot of comedians that have that have a following, all that, and they want to 
cross over. And it's not really a crossover. It's going after the other money. Because comedy, once, and, and then people say, oh, it's white. No, because if you go to Dave Chappelle, everybody says this. Dave Chappelle had a white crowd. But he didn't have a white crowd. It's where he started. Because he started comedy in D.C. With right. Tony Woods, all them. And then he went to New York. And then it's just what shows he was doing. He was doing Star Search, all that. So right. he was getting checks from mainstream. Exactly. It's not that he didn't have an urban appeal. He just wasn't getting... There's not you, but there's not that many urban clubs. Yeah. Back in the day, they had rooms like they had the Sugar Shack in Harlem, like Bill Bellamy had club. Everybody had like a room. There was a real chitlin circuit, but mm-hmm. outside of that, how much more money could you make? How sure. what, until Def Jam hit? If you didn't do Star Search or any of those other shows or Byron Allen, that just came around. You weren't seen as an urban act at all. Wow. And then if you did a mainstream room, they would first thing they said to my, oh, you a sellout. No, dude, I bought a house. That part. <laughs> I mean, I bought a house and, you know, I'm leaving some some wealth for my children. And, and there's it, there's residual in that show. When they show that show, I get a check. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. yeah. Because I my comedian friend, Wally Collins, he was one of the first, he was one of the first hosts for one of the MTV shows. Oh, Comedy Central. Okay. Now, you know, know Wally Collins, he's from my hometown, but he's a com- commercially sound dude. And yeah. you, and all comedy is built on the going back to get the sponsorship. People act like they don't, they don't get it. But you become a comedian to do the work to get the sponsorship. Never you do the work to come back around, get the sponsorship. That's what Kevin Hart, everybody else does. You don't do comedy and be like, oh, I don't want to do it. I don't, yeah. The sponsorship is them giving you a big check because your voiceover or something is going to be in a commercial or it's going to do, they're going to put commercial spots on it. That's what Facebook and all that is. Your push and your energy gets ads placed to sell commercials. Well, you know, I came from the radio world, so you know I'm all oh, about so yeah. I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you, you, know, you know, we got we to gotta go to commercial. Shoot. <laughs> okay. Uh, my check didn't clear. So that's that's <laughs> now I'm saying you know you showing your age and you said star search. You you went back with that one. <laughs> hey, I but I you know I me mean, the thing about it is that's you know a lot of the younger comedians and I they don't they didn't see it. I did yep. comic view twice. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's like when I did comic view, they was giving out seven thousand dollar check. I hear the next couple of years, it was like, man, comic view gave me twenty five hundred dollars. I was like, ooh. Yeah, I don't. I don't need. I don't need to do these shows no more. <laughs> I, yeah, just, going down then, didn't it? <laughs> I need to find my white voice. I'm, that part. <laughs> yeah, I'm cold switching now, over here. I always get deeper into the conversation when I ask because I want to know what the who the comedian really is. So behind just the comedy, like who is your favorite rapper or, or singer? Oh, my favorite singer is Anita Baker. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Beginning to win. Are you going to Vegas to see her? I, I stopped going to see Anita Baker. And this is this is personal. Anita Baker, don't be singing all her songs. I don't like that. Oh, okay. Anita, Anita got me at Chastain a couple of times. Me and my <laughs> wife. Beginning to win 365 days of the year. Thank you. That ain't the whole song, Anita. Uh-uh. You better you not just do a melody. I want the whole song. Thank you. You've been all the good times. Thank you. No. You better sing the whole song, Anita. What's your favorite Anita song? <laughs> Look, ain't nobody asked you to be here if you didn't want to be here. No, you better sing the whole song. <laughs> All right, like Anita Baker, my favorite rapper. Um, I grew up with Tribe Called Quest, Big okay. L. Um, so I would say what identified to me as a person was Tribe Called Quest. Okay, check the rhyme. All that. Bonita okay. Apple Bone, you gotta yes. put me on. I left my wallet in Elsa yes. Gun. All that, all that, yes, I know that one. All that poor righteous teacher. I was a that was my thing. And then L O N S. Then you know, but I I grew up Big L. You know, all those rappers from that because my brother was a DJ, so right. I knew everybody's music and I knew where their samples came from because that's what he was mm-hmm. doing. So when people came out with a sample from something that my brother was like, "Yo, that's." Hall of Notes. That's this. I'd be like, oh, oh that's whack. Why would they say right? So it kind of if you weren't doing original music or tracks or all this, I would just be like, eh, you ain't really. You know cool. Track made me mad when he remade it. Um, 
what was it? Um, Mario Winans, I don't want to know. It made me so mad because I was like, I if you're gonna remake like a track, I don't want to know. Oh, yeah, I don't want to hear this song. It was just, uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mario Winans messed me up because I was like, don't the church pay more? Yeah, that part. <laughs> But you know, everybody got church hurt, so you know what I'm saying. Hey, so, you know what? Hey, everybody, everybody you know? want to be in the club. Everybody, everybody, I don't care, I don't care who you are. So wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. What, who is your uh, what, who is what's your uh, favorite Anita song? Oh, um, from beginning, in, from beginning to oh, no, 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 um, Rapture. Okay, I think my mom is her, her favorite one is that, um. Uh, yeah, I think it's from beginning in 365, whatever. Yeah, from beginning to yeah. end, three, so and, and, she, and she was in that role. When I saw the video, that's when I fell in love because I like the little haircut. Mm -hmm. You know that little, um, you know that little, almost looked like mine kind. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> right. I love that because I was in love with all short hair, Halle Berry, mm. uh, all the short hair, uh, Nia Long. I was like, oh, you can rock a short haircut. And I still love you. Woo! Cause that in the long run, you know, when they you get older, everybody lose their hair. So it's all about this. So you would still love Jada, huh? Uh we ain't gonna talk about Jada. Jada made me mad. Jada, Jada don't bother me. Jada don't shook up the whole world. Okay. I told my I told my wife, women run the world. Facts. Women run the world. Women, why you know a lot of people be hating on female comedians, but the truth of the matter is women run the comedy clubs because ain't no dude just going to the comedy club. They're going with their girlfriend or their wife. Come on. Going, I tell everybody, if you ain't writing jokes, you going in there to uh, disrespect women, uh, you ain't going to have a long comp. Well, some people get away with it because some women like that that shit. Some women, because I watched T.K. Kirkland and uh, Corey Holcomb say the most horrible stuff and the women be like, he crazy. I want to take a picture. I'm like, he just told you that you wasn't shit, man. <laughs> well, I ain't. I ain't. This is the thing, though. Most of the people, when you, you don't, you're not offended by that if it don't pertain to you, because it's like, oh yeah, he's right. talking about, he's talking about me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He he must be talking about these other hoes. <laughs> <That part. laughs> I'm like, I'm, like, no, he he talking about all hoes. <laughs> he ain't talking about me. Shoot, I ain't one of them hoes. I'm one of them hoes that do. Wait a minute, man. Stop calling yourself a hoe. Well, anyways. <laughs> right. Now speaking of, you said you used to roast, and I didn't even know that. I didn't know you could roast like that. So since, roast we, since we can talk about the roast, if you had to pick three people to be on a roasting team, who would yeah. it be? Um, DL Ugly. Okay. Uh, uh, Double D. Okay. And. Tony Tone, Tony Tone, light skinned Tony Newellen. I know you're talking about, yeah. Okay. Tony is because Tony does the okay. So this is his this is history for me. Mm -hmm. Him and K Dub was going at it. We were at the Laugh of Palooza. This mm -hmm. is when Jamie Foxx, the first one, everybody was here in Atlanta, and they were going at it. And okay. K Dub said something, bow, hit Tony. Tony said, That's why your mom is the NBA horn. All they do is pinch her in the back and she'd be like, huh? The fact that you could remember it let you <laughs> let you further know. That's, look, because he sound just like the horn. And I worked NBA for like <laughs> so I was like, I looked around, I was like, oh God. Because huh? <laughs> Kate Dub is normally pretty good, so if somebody could get him, they got him. Yo. So he, and he was like, and he, he, the thing is, he is the nicest guy. Him, yeah. Double D, nicest dudes. But mm -hmm. when you get him going, oh. Yeah. But yeah, me, I, I, I got to the point because I talk funny. Okay. When I first moved here, I had to call Park Water. I was in Massachusetts. I sound like an East Coast. So when I talk, kids yeah. be like, hey, where you from, bro? Child, why you talk <laughs> like that, bro? Like, right. hey, say that again, bro. I'd be like, water. They'd be like, ha, ha, bro. Hell no, nah. mm -hmm. <laughs> and I lived in Kensington Station. I lived in the deck. I lived Euclid. I lived Vine City before they built the dome. I mm -hmm. lived in those apartments that everybody wanted to live in with the gate. I lived there. And it was good. Like, it's real talk. So when I would go places, people would be like, uh, can I get a, a number two? Mm -hmm. What, nigga? Shout. Two, nigga. I ain't <laughs> never heard the whole. 
It's I know it's three letters, but nigga, I ain't never heard all three letters. Y'all. It's all in there. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, cause I was correcting people. Like I worked in the medical field, so somebody be like, "Range it off." I'd be like, that is a salad dressing. I don't understand. What this <laughs> and they would be like, excuse me. And they would say, like, tote. And I'm thinking tote as in bag. They're like, no, that mean the carrot. Got there, shout. You stupid, bro. Oh, and I'm, like, I'm not dumb. I'm just saying the words are being used wrong. Correctly. If it right- they're looking at me like, oh. Now, I came down here from LA. I'm from LA. So when we got down and they told us we were like I'm, I'm I done got the little country slang now. Yeah. But they told us we were proper. We was like, what? oh yeah. I was <laughs> killing them, but I would kill you on the phone because they would be okay. like, hi, how are you? Great. So my um I'm gonna be down around nine. Nine mm-hmm. is a good time. We can yeah we could definitely meet them. They see me. They're like, oh this dude is he he's a black dude. Like he really. <laughs> And then the name don't help, Hank. They be like, so where are your family from? Springfield, Massachusetts. My father and my mom still live. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but he after- came down here, and I remember it was um, it was one of my brother's friends. He was telling me and my mama's story. We was looking at him like this, like a deer in head. Like we didn't know what the hell he was. Yeah, saying. And my <laughs> cousins is from Augusta. Um, oh. My father's from Americas. Um, mm-hmm. Cousins live in Savannah. I got tons of family here, and yeah. they would look at me crazy too. I was to come down here and play basketball and like you know come to college all that I was like I can't do it because I got tired of the ridicule hey man why you talk like that bro and you talk and then the only thing that broke got me down here was Freak Nick Freak Nick my oh, boy man. is Travis Best play for Georgia okay. Tech and mm-hmm. he, they used to talk about the Freak Nick all the time me and my cousin Chris my cousin Chris Christmas from North Winston Salem North Carolina we drove no, he's from Raleigh. We drove down here. I picked him up. We drove down here for two of the freak nicks. Mm-hmm. You couldn't tell me I couldn't pull him because I was like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what I'm saying? What's your like- name? You know what I'm saying? They were like, ooh, where are you from? New York? Nah, I'm from Boston. I- and I had to stop saying that. I was like, I'm from Springfield, Massachusetts, where the Hall of Fame is. Like, well, yeah. hey, basketball, man. That's where it's okay. been, baby. You know what I mean? And it was working. I was like, oh, I'm staying. I'm staying. <laughs> I'm saying. This Negro was telling us a story, and he was just like, "Yeah." And he was like, "So boom, you know, we went down the store and we're like, but shut it off." And we was like, "What?" And he, every time he gets you, he like, "Shut it off." And we're we're looking around. I was like, "I don't see the door he talking about at all." And he looking at us like, "What?" The, this nigga was saying, "But check this though." Yes, nigga, I was done. I said, "I don't know." It messed me up a couple of times, but I stopped judging because <laughs> it, it got me in a it got me in a couple not physical fights. But dude, mm-hmm. like, hey man. You don't, you don't, you you don't like how I say what I say, bro. And I'm like, um, it's fine. <laughs> like, I'm gonna let this cup pass. I don't, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not trying because I live, I lived in Kensington Station before, like during and before, after when they had bodies in the the lake mm. and all that. I had the dope boys lived in my building. You know, it was, you know, I was learn I, everything about Atlanta. I learned Yazines. You got to call in your order. Sometimes mm-hmm. you can get your fish fried extra hard. <laughs> you know, it was just stuff that I knew. Like I was here when it was Atlanta Live, One Twelve, mm-hmm. um, Kyle. Yeah, I was here, so it was like, dude, you from Atlanta, bro? Listen, like, my like, mom did not know. Four on four day shouting, we don't dance no more. Mm-hmm. My mama did not know that there was there was no M in sandwich until she oh. was finished. Because my grandma used to say sandwich all the time. She knew the M in sandwich. (laughs) Yeah. Man, let me tell you something. You know what? If you feel like this, Lana, I was born in Massachusetts, but Atlanta made me. I can tell you that much. Atlanta made me. I work for... Well, go ahead. Do your other questions. I'll be jumping around talking. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So moving on. How have you stayed motivated in the entertainment industry during the quarantine time? Oh, uh, my wife. <laughs> okay. What the hell are you going to do? <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. How, what, what the hell are you going to do? Nah, I, I knew that it was a new time. We were going to a new place. And okay. people really need to laugh. Um, teachers started dying mm. from COVID, from my push. And, like, and, they were, and I was like, you got to do it. But I, I hit a dark patch myself. Not based on being out, because I was doing shows. Like, okay. little like this. My medical background, I was like, you think about how I stay healthy all the time. It's the same process. 
You okay. know, like if I could wear a mask during policy season and nobody not look at me crazy before pandemic, I would. I yeah. would be walking around pollen season. I'll be walking around with a mask on. They'd be like, why you got a mask on? You don't see this yellow shit everywhere? Exactly. You don't see this? Pollen is aggressive. Pollen is a gang. It mm -hmm. right it don't know, you don't even know how it get in your house. Mm -hmm. And I was just that process of me owning content. It's like I started a podcast called Sneakers Unplugged and I recorded it. I'm dropping that. And then I did interviews with comedians on joke dealers. I did interviews with teachers called Teacher Relief Live or Teacher Talks. And I was just like, build the content on the other end of it because the money is based in content. And right. it's like, so if you home, you got the lighting and stuff, interview these people, catalog that stuff. So then when you get to the point where you have, it's called intellectual property. So mm -hmm. I go ahead, LLC it, trademark it, put it out. It pops somewhere, it's doing numbers. That money's going to feed my kids, their kids, kids, because content is timeless. Right. So if I'm going to sit here and be this energy and this talented and have these ideas, why not do it when you're sitting around the house trying to avoid your family? <laughs> that part. Listen, I've been doing my podcast for 2018, but I like the, the quarantine made me really beef up on it because I'm lying doing enough. Yes. And it's <laughs> like you, it, it's, it's an exchange of energy. You're mm -hmm. talking. Um, and it's, this is where we're headed. Like everybody takes content in on their phones. Nobody yeah. ain't really sitting behind no TV and no, they don't even sit behind their computer and watch right. they taking everything in on their phone. So if you can put this, this work everywhere, like now it's like, if you do this, you can put it everywhere. Like it's almost like, oh, I made a show. What channel is it on? All of them. Mm -hmm. All right. of them. That's right. Well, moving on, during the quarantine, a lot of people was watching the verses. Did you were you a fan of the verses? Yeah. Okay, so which was your favorite verses of all time? Uh what was it Bougie Bonton? And <laughs> oh, when they called the police. <laughs> that nigga set it up, didn't it? <laughs> we all fire. I'm all fire. I was like, yes. Oh. You oh you couldn't do nothing like yeah select ah woo you 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 banging on the walls like a Jamaican party oh but hey bring me a plate my oh man and uh Jada Kiss oh yes that was Jada Kiss by himself they ain't even need nobody else man let me man. say let me tell you something the locks everybody else was cute you know what I mean SWV and all that yeah I don't, everybody's cute, but man Bushi Bougie and uh, the lot, those two. Whew. Well, there's three that was most entertaining to me as far as that level. The Booty Bonton was one, uh -huh. um, the locks and Jeezy. And uh, oh, well, that one was creepy. Oh, yeah, that, 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 I was like, if, if they start shooting in here, well, that's why I was so entertaining because I'm like, nigga, do I need to duck? Like, I felt scared in my own house, bro. <laughs> that was creepy. I was like, they they cool, everybody cool, they're like, yeah. yeah. But no, my favorite. Got, but it got tacky because they started talking about how much money they spend and all. I was like, "Can stay to the music, dog." No, stay that was uh, who? That was Gucci being extra Gucci. tacky. Jeezy was trying to be like, "All right, let's be grown men about it. Let's right. move on." <laughs> Gucci was like, "Nigga, my outfit cost ten thousand. Like, <laughs> like you spent ten thousand on that. That's great." <laughs> <laughs> no, my favorite one was um, because it was my childhood. Brandy and Monica. That yeah, was, I oh like that one. I, I, I that one was cool. That the was that was cool. Was, I could tell Monica was getting pissed off about them poems. She's like, "This bitch pull out another poem, goddamn!" <laughs> I'm so sick of these poems. Yo, Brandy, super, super earthy, crunchy now. <laughs> what earthy, crunchy? You know them people live in little five. Be talking about you know earthy. You know you oh, have to be. She air about you now. <laughs> yeah, be saging you in the grocery store. But like. Get, I'm gonna set off the alarm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you had to put a versus together that has not been done yet, who would you want to match up? Um, wow, I don't know. Let me see. Buster Rhymes and somebody, okay. I Anybody who I, I would say Buster Rhymes. I probably would say Buster Rhymes. I could. I would say Fat Joe maybe, because um, I'm thinking about who has the catalog to compete with him. 
Um, I only know Lean Back from Fat Joe. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I only know oh, well, yo, Fat Joe got a lot of help. Um, but I would say anybody, Busta Rhymes and anybody. I was, Missy Elliott would be the only one that I think could, could go at him. But yeah. everybody else don't have that catalog. But I know Buster Rhymes going. He gonna give us. He gonna be like, yo. He gonna. He ain't gonna stop. Yo, I got. I got hits. <laughs> you ain't lying. You I can't know. think of other than Missy, but yeah, I don't. Mm. Buster Rhymes is somebody. Answer. I just want to see him because everybody else, I'm like, eh, you know, Jay Z. Well, well, if we if we're not talking about the same genre, you he could do a um maybe a Lil Wayne. He would destroy Lil Wayne. They catalog about the fame though. As far as hits, I don't know. Yeah, I would say Wheezy. Yeah, I'm not like we're not saying the same decade, but just you know, catalog. Yeah. You know, I would say Wheezy, and that would be dope. You know why? Because it would bring two generations together to watch. That's true. That's true. Yep. But that would be it. I couldn't. I couldn't fit nobody else. Yeah. No, nah. because everybody yeah. else's catalog is major. It's like you know, if you can't, you know. I, if I had it to do, I would put Prince and Michael Jackson. What? Oh, Prince was not look. Prince would be like, um, no, I'm not. Prince is rude. Yeah, he he'd be rude. I'm not doing it. Why? Right, I I'm, do that? I'm sorry. Mm -mm. Michael, no, that's fine. No, Michael good. is good at what he does. I'm good at what I do. That part. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he's. That's how it was. <clears throat> Who I, I think that would be really dope if they and they and they can make it happen. They need to if they put Little Wayne and Ti. Them two catalogs? That no. would be dope. Lil Wayne would get T.I. How you... Are you serious? I think so. I don't know. It, because it, it, commercially, Lil Wayne's music has jumped a lot of commercial barriers. For, yeah. Okay. Because it's like Lil Wayne's stuff has been... It's, commercial, it's been commercially pushed so much. T.I. got a few that's commercially pushed, but for yeah. us... Because we play T.I. in the club and all that. Right. But Lil Wayne stuff, you know, you go to concerts. Yeah. And you see white kids. True. And then you go to one concert, you just, it's black, white. That catalog is pushing when it's all white kids. That is true. I didn't think about it that way. Because I, I, I'm listening to T.I. stuff the other day. I'm just like... I you, I've, I got majority of all it. Well, I I think I got all of albums. I'm just like yeah, hey, I got a lot of his stuff because he got he got a lot of hits and yeah. you know what I mean. But it's like right now where you are now, it's like he got so much commercial stuff. But his commercial crossover was more yeah. or less TV. It was oh, right. TV and movies and screen wasn't more or less music. But his music hits like I ain't never been as do 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 do. Right. do, do. Oh, what That's you it. know about that? Oh, man, you can't tell me nothing. I was, man, I had them playing it up north. They weren't playing. They T.I. in the club. I'm like, my brother's a DJ. I'm like, yo, y'all need to be bumping T.I. right now. Listen, they be like, yeah. Ford made me a fan, but Be Easy made me a long lead fan. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> All right, we move it on. What is the ultimate goal you want to achieve in the industry? Um, I just want to be a name like that can make stuff happen. Um, mm -hmm. comedy is my gift that gets me in the doors but I want to be somebody that makes the needle move like if Hank Denson says it or Hank Denson put a stamp on it it's a it's a green you know what I mean like yeah. I don't want to be walking around and I'm just uh, an entertainer where they just come on in we'll pay you do that I want to be like somebody who owns it moves it hires people to do it or they didn't do they wouldn't do it unless I said it was going to be dope mm. That's that. Hey, that's good right there. <laughs> I mean, you know, if influence, if you're gonna have, if you're gonna influence people in your face, you should be able to influence them off the stage and commercially and in the markets. It's like that's what we're here for. You get yeah. that gift to move the needle, especially as a black man. You got to be able to move the needle. You mm -hmm. got to be able to go in a room and change people's ideal about black people or the black experience, not just steal our culture. Or, uh, misappropriate it and do whatever they want with it. They, wow. We got to be able to control it and then show them how to use it and then respect it. So, definitely. All right, well, name one entrepreneur that you admire and why. Oh, man. Come on, man. My dude, uh, Byron Allen. Mm, okay. I see that. You ain't got to tell me. Well, I already know. 
<laughs> Myron Allen. It's like, hey, dude, look, I'll create it. I'll sell my own. You, I'll sell my own marketing, and mm-hmm. then I'm gonna buy everything else. And then ask me why I don't. We don't own it. That's that's it. Just why do you don't? Why do we? Why, why don't we own it? Yeah. Why not? Why why not? He is the level of why not. Mm. True. Okay. Kevin Hart and other people underneath it. Will uh, Steve Harvey? I learned a lot about Steve Harvey in the last couple of weeks. But okay. yo, own it. Like create it. Own it. Intellectual property. Like own it. We're so talented. Oh. It makes my stomach hurt sometimes. I'll be like, oh. And then cats get mad. Why you ask me all that? I'm like, do you own it? What do you? But see, if you know better, you do better. Like right. they, they they getting through all these little bad deals or whatever because they're not doing the research. They just, really, they just really. I am yeah. really proud of 85 South. Man. Oh, yeah. Man. Ooh. They're taping their own stuff for their app now. Man, mm-hmm. 85 South. My hat, my hat off to Carlos Miller and the crew, yo. Dope. Because if you're gonna have if you're gonna have numbers and data, yeah, and don't do nothing with it. That's you- see, this is the dope thing I love that I love about their platform, is because they didn't just get on and be like, okay, I'm on. They're like educating people on how to get their stuff done. They reset the brand of what a tour comedy is. Most cats are when they do shows and they tour all over the country and there's mm-hmm. comedians on the show. You do your time. I do your time. You do. They're giving us a synergy of three of them, right? All together with a band and then they're bagging it. And then they yeah. have a podcast. It's just merchandise. Mm-hmm. Everything across the board is just dope. And the next thing that they, they got now with the um, TV. Yeah. If I saw TV, you yeah. start creating movies and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. Then you get production deals where you partner with studios because they want those numbers so i'm I'm not surprised if a year from now they ain't doing they ain't got a production deal with netflix or hulu or somebody where they're producing movies and other content they probably got it now they just put it it ain't put it out the bag yet but they probably got it now i'm not surprised i'm not surprised so i'm telling you it's it's dope to see something that amazing i mean look adam sandler um judd apatow all these dudes Mm -hmm. all they do is grab their boys yes Absolutely. Get their boys hot. Everybody go out, get their check, write their stuff, come back together, do a dope project. That's mm-hmm. all they do. And it's like, I don't understand the amount of the comedy and the talent that we have. Cats can't get together, just write us. They can't. And that's uh, that's one of my guys put it in my heart to start writing stuff and yeah. bringing the cats in that I know to just yes. be like, yo, we're going to shoot it. We're going to write it. Everybody going to eat. Go do your tour after it go out. Everybody go out. If we can go out together, come back in, write something else, create something else. And you know me, so I need to be a part of that. So uh, <laughs> go ahead and sprinkle that in real quick. Hey, go ahead, Michelle, uh, speak it into existence. Now, what would you tell any upcoming entertainer or entrepreneur? Um, own your stuff. Dot com your name. Go do the legals first because mm. you can go viral overnight. You go viral overnight, you don't own nothing. True. You go hot on TikTok, so you got a million followers. Then what? How mm. you going to monetize that? How can you don't even have a landing page? Get a piece of merchandise, okay? If you got a million people who can show up, or if you got 50,000 people who will show up to see you, what if you turn that into a dollar? So at least if you got half of that, that's $20,000 of straight revenue that you got. Don't take opportunities for granted. When you walk in a room, your job for yourself is to grab as much data out of that room as you can as an entertainer. You ain't just the entertainer. Separate yourself from the entity Make yourself a different entity. Kevin Hart, when you see Kevin Hart, you pay for Kevin Hart, the performer, then you pay for the production. Mm. Kevin Hart production is a deposit that's $300,000, $500,000, because it's a guaranteed sick ticket sale. Then yeah. you get Kevin Hart, which is totally different, and then he going to want the rights to it, the licensing, so he can push it, put it wherever he wants to. That's Be right. that. That's Be right. that. Try to, try to build that. Because show business comes in two words, show and business. It should be business of show because business is the, the key word first. Business is the key word. I'm telling you. Well, now we are moving on to the fun segments of the day. Our first one is kiss or diss. That's celebrity crushes. You're going to decide who you kiss and who you dissing. All right. Mm. Our first one. Jill okay, Scott. Wait, hold on. Where is this going? Where is this going? Because my wife be watching. Where is this going? <laughs> It's hypothetical. We know you ain't finna kiss them. <laughs> okay, honey, I don't even like these women. 
<laughs> Jill Scott or Erica Badu? Who you kissing? Who you dissing? Ooh, Jill Scott. Because I don't know what about Erica Badu, but she be having you messed up. Okay. You ain't going to have me wearing no toe rings. <laughs> no turbans? You ain't going to have me <laughs> making hats and uh, something about Erica Badu have dudes twisted. Mm -mm. All right. Andre 3000 ain't been the same since. Mm -mm. You ain't not. <laughs> Common either. <laughs> All right. Carrie Washington or Regina King? Who you can oh, Regina King. Okay. Yeah. Regina King. Nothing against Carrie, but mm -mm, Regina King. Them eyes? Mm. Okay. Moving on. Harriet Tubman or Barbara Jordan? Who you kissing? Who you dissing? Who's Barbara Jordan? You a teacher and you don't know who Barbara Jordan is? Who's Barbara Jordan? I'm not a teacher though. Who's Barbara Jordan? I'm sorry. <laughs> the um, the uh, well, I hate to say old school, but she was a um, the first black lawyer. Oh no, I'm kissing uh, Harriet Tubman. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. All these years, I thought you was in the teaching field. No, this is the magic that we call entertainment. The oh. video went viral with the 10 million views for me chaperoning an aquarium trip, and I. Oh, that's why the business is important. I trademarked the hashtag pay teachers more money. Did a tour called clubs wouldn't book me because they didn't know what it was. I don't need you. I get one or two clubs and I, I cause this makes people nervous because mm. I'm not a teacher and I talk like I do. It, 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 and I move teachers to inspire them to, to live their lives and to, to protect themselves. And I, I coined it teacher relief live and I did a 35 city tour on my own, all the major clubs. Oh, that is so dope. Yeah. On, so man. this right here, is part of one of my brands because I got sneakers. I got a podcast too. Look, I touch sneakers, sneakers unplugged. Okay, okay. And I have Joke Dealers, which is a brand that's all production. And, you know, my wife has a company called Wifey Company. And okay. my son is writing a book. So it's all when you have one piece of data that moves, you can add other pieces to it. Absolutely. So, yeah, but no, nah, no, nah, I'm not. I would kiss Harriet Tubman because one, she'll come back and get you mm -hmm. under any circumstance. I, I don't need no woman to leave me and not come back and get me. Whether she running or driving a car, Harriet gonna be like, I'm coming to get you. You remember the scene when she came back to get her husband right. and he had married somebody else? I was like, she came. Dude, a woman, women have choices. Yes, facts. She, facts. Came, she, she ran, ran. She ran to Massachusetts and then ran back to Mississippi to get you. No, you, can want. Want. you come with me, player. That's, That's a healthy woman. That's who you want kids with. You talking <laughs> about <laughs> football players? Huh? Some athletes? Shh. All right, we are moving. These little, these little ass man, little ass my kids we got now. Shit, I need a kid that can run. You Can you run to Boston? Uh-huh. Daddy, I can. Yes. Because your mother can. <laughs> oh my God. All right, we're going to move on to DAQs. This dumbass question, just random questions I want answers to. If you were a superhero, what would be your superhero name and what would your power be? Oh, disappearing man. <laughs> okay. Because some shit you just need to just, I got to get out of here. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> and that gas is so expensive. <laughs> so I would rather just be able to go poof and be in the house. And you know what? I need to go to the club. Because I live... In Kennesaw, like Kennesaw, oh, Georgia. Oh, okay. So look, you see your face? So imagine I'm if I could live in Kennesaw, I know. <laughs> imagine if I could go through a poof and I'm on the couch at Atlanta Comedy Theater. Poof, yes. And I go to punch. You know how much money I'm saying? Poof, T E D. If I could take people with me, come on. You won't be part of that, Michelle. I'm like, hey, Michelle, yes. look. We we call poof man. That's it. We're going to Hawaii. All we gotta do is make the reservations. We're That's out here. So come by the house. You can park the car in the driveway. Y'all ready? Got your bags? Poof. Come on. That's it. <laughs> 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 All right. For twenty thousand dollars, would you legally change your name to <laughs> Butt Crunch McGee for three years? No. Uh. Uh. Mm -mm. The reason why is because I'm named after my father. Okay. And my son is named after me. And I told my dad that his name would be known all over the world. And I'm. <laughs> And I'm partly there. I'm almost there. So a butt crunch would not be twenty thousand dollars wouldn't touch it. Cause I can make you know what the the, the how God works, the universe works. I can make twenty thousand dollars three years. Yes, absolutely. As Hank Vincent. So I to be butt crack. What would you say, butt scrape McGee? Mm -mm. Ain't enough money. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. What is the worst name you could give a free clinic? Oh, itchy and be gone. <laughs> itchy. You can call it the itchy clinic. They'd be like, what? But it'd be packed. What's the, you know what? I can't think of that name. Of, that it's a song. When you said that, this came to me. It'd be like, that itchy. That itchy. <laughs> oh, right. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. The itchy clinic, because it would be packed. Because people be like, it didn't have to be nothing special. You know what I mean? It don't have to be actually genitalia. It, okay. But people be like, I'm itching. And if that's all you had to say when you get there, I'm itching. They'll be like, oh, yeah, we can take care of that. <laughs> okay. Now, if you if animals could talk, which one would be the rudest? Oh, that damn cat. Cats mm -hmm. rude as shit. They rude. Man, I don't like cats. Cats is rude. I used to have a cat. I got a, uh, had a, a cloth top. Cloth, my wife had a cloth top Mercedes. That cat would climb his ass up on the car, on the car shed, and just look at us. <laughs> I was like, man, cats is rude. Man, yeah. man, you ever you see the little you see the little videos where the cats be slapping people, slapping babies? Oh, a cat would slap the hell out you. They I smart think. though. I had a cat before and it scared the hell out of me. I had one of these doors where it's like you had to prop it against something so it wouldn't um, close out of that. He knew, he knew how to open it. Yeah. And I was, he had his own little room. I went to sleep one night. The alarm was on. And all of a sudden, my phone, all my phones was ringing. I'm like, what's going on? So I picked up the phone and was like, your alarm is going on. Are you okay? And I'm like, oh, shoot. So now I'm listening like, oh, God, somebody must be in the house. So now I'm grabbing a knife by my bed like, yeah. hey, I'm trying to creep up. And all I heard was jingle, jingle, jingle. I said, this nigga, this cat. Yeah. Got they rude. <laughs> they so rude. You know how rude they are? When they move into your house, they piss all over everything so no one else can live there. Now, I ain't had that problem. You got cats? No, I had one. I don't, I don't have any more. But I never had one. Because he ain't rude. Oh, okay. You need a rude cat. I'm telling you, cats is rude, bro. Rude. You ever see them walk across the street and look at you slow? Like, what? Just like, walk. Like, you won't hit their ass? Like, yeah. Uh -huh. And you ain't, look, you ain't scared of nothing else black. You ain't lying. You scared of black people. They scared of black people and what else? Black cats. That's it. Cats is rude, nasty bastards. I swear, I don't like them. Oh, they, you ever see one spit up a hairball? Oh! And then leave it. Leave it right there. Don't walk off like ain't nothing happened. Walk around like that didn't just come out your back of your throat. Oh, yeah. All right. Name three items you would purchase to make a cashier feel uncomfortable. Oh, <laughs> cashier. What store? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, you know what it is. Okay. Duct tape. Okay. Rope. Mm -hmm. And a shovel. Okay, you definitely burying somebody. Yep, they'll be like, mm -mm, sir, don't do it. <laughs> I'm like, I had enough of these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> sir, don't do it. Oh. You know that's a flag. What? It's flag sometimes. My brother in law used to be GBI. That's a Flag like they flag that you can't oh. order that on Amazon. They'll flag you. Dang. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. In fact, the way I said it in this order, mm -hmm. they gonna flag me. But don't be surprised. They be like, can we talk to you? Hi. Right, this, this is. <laughs> they like this. Yeah, is, all uh, hypothetical. Like, this is FBI. We uh, can we talk about your interview with Hank Benson the other day? How well do you know him? Oh god. All right, we are moving on to GMG. What grinds your gangster name? One of your pet peeves. Oh, right now, one of my pet peeves is uh res I got a few. One of my major pet peeves that I, I, I live by is people don't nobody cares. Okay. You you Stop thinking people care. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. When you stop thinking about who cares, you gonna it's gonna free up all your life. We mm -hmm. spend so much of our time thinking about who cares. Right. And my pet peeve to anybody be like, yo, if something you want to do, who can't do it? Who cares? If you get no, you get all that, who that's one of my highest. Everything that I've accomplished is I, I don't think about who, anybody else agreeing or thinking it's dope. I'm like, I'm doing it. I don't care. That's correct. 
All right, now we are going to our fan favorite, which is Opera That Thing Out. That is where you are picking any song that you know at least one full verse to, and you're singing in your best opera voice. It could be a rap song, theme song, nursery rhyme, whatever you got. Okay. I am only a bill. I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. But today I am still. But I don't know the rest of the But today I am still. Just how Bill. <laughs> That's how you do that thing? All right. Okay. I thought about that when you first said it. I said, oh, I'm going to sing that. I was going to do, and I unpack my adjectives. And I unpack my adjectives. <laughs> Retarded. Okay. All right, we are moving on to our last segment, which is Sing a Do. Sing a Do is a family friendly game we create over the quarantine. Me and my homeboy DJ All Star. All you're doing is singing the melody of a song, but you can only use the word do. We have different genres. We got hip hop, RB, greatest hits, TV themes, country rock, party and dance hits. So I'm going to do RB and hip hop because that's my lane. So okay. I'm going to go ahead and start and I'm going to let you guess and I'm going to let you do a couple too. Okay. All right, let's go. Um, do 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 There we go. All right. Let's see. Uh okay. Do 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 I don't know. I know the melody, but I don't know the words. Emotional, Carl Thomas. Yes. Oh, okay. All right, last one. Hold on to your love. All right, here we go. Yep. All right, so now I'm going to hold up the card to the um, camera. Okay. The song that you know, let me know, and I'll put it down. I'm going to try to get it. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, wait a minute. If I need to move it. Where, where's the song at? You know, I had to take these glasses off. What did you mean? Oh, um, I can pick anyone? Yeah, anyone you know. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh, go put it back up. Gosh, I picked the wrong one because I was thinking about how I'm gonna do how I'm gonna do do that. Ah, do 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 do. Oh, do, I do, can't stand the rain, Vicky Ellie. Okay. Whoa, that was that was rough. I was like that second one. I was like, okay. What was the second one? Oh, hey, uh, Mr. Postman. Okay. That was a do 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 do. I don't know how many doodles can I fit. Okay. All right, next one. Oh, oh, man. Okay. Oh, come on, brain. I knew I shouldn't have had that edible. Hold on. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh. You can pick it do, up. do, do, do. Oh, I can't. Oh, God. I'm honest. It was juicy. I I I took. I destroyed that. Juicy? Yeah. Because I didn't. I don't know if I'm doing the melody or the words. So I'm always thinking. You sing the melody of the 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 melody, the the beat, basically. But well, no, the melody will be the lyrics. So yeah, the melody. So it's like, yeah. So my tape pop. I, yeah, because I I how many doodles do you I'm put in? Like, how do you do juicy? Um right. To my tape. Oh, you know what? I would have did the hook. Do 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 do. See, See? Yeah. This, this is a good game though. Well, thank this you. Is a good game. This I'm gonna try game. one more and then we're gonna be out of here. Let's All right. Gosh. Oh, this is easy. Okay. Do 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 do. There it is. Huh? Whoop! There it is. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that is how you play. That was dope. That was dope because I was like, she don't know that one. 
Because that just sounds like do 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 do. Well, you know, I'm a DJ too, so you know, I'll be knowing some music. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got to be a real music head for this game. You gotta be oh, a real absolutely, music absolutely. At least, yeah. at least know something. How many I, like you got Hall of Notes and other stuff on here? I do. I know we got we, we even got country rock. Like I don't some of these songs I don't know, but the reason we did it like that is because you know everybody ain't just an R and B and hip hop fan. We yeah. for everybody. So if you like country rock, it's on there. You like TV. You got this in Target already, sis? Not yet. We trying. We trying. Y'all Walmart? Nope. We, we right now it's this hand to hand in our website until we get until we get picked up by somebody because hey. we and all that. Hey, look, let, let me know. I invest. This is gonna be amazing. I can't wait. I we can't wait to get this. Show and everything. We got sing a do game on YouTube right now. We done dropped the game. We trying to we trying to make it like a um like a real show like, like yeah like a wild and out or something like that. Yeah, so. I got a, a game show. It's called That's a Damn Deal. Okay, all right. And what it is is based on we've been at home and everybody been trying to you know groceries we buy stuff online i picked whatever the meal or the item is so it's like if i'm cleaning the bathroom i get these three items i tell you how much they were and okay. then you got to beat that price if you beat that price i cash out you what you spent mm. so okay. spaghetti dinner hand, gr simple stuff though you know what i mean it's not like i'm gonna be like oh yeah i made couscous with um you know a little reduction and some you know ratatouille right. no we ain't doing all that we're gonna keep it at 25 or less. Okay. But the, that's a damn deal. And then people just, because if you go and people clean their bathroom or stuff they do around the house, they're like, oh, usually I go get this, this, and this. Well, these three items, do you get them at this price? Or do you just, you know, and so everybody looks for a deal. That's a damn deal. That's a, yeah, that, that, that is. All right now, you better drop them knowledge. Well, please let everybody know how they can find you, what shows you got going up, what you're selling, your merch, all that good stuff. So everything is Hank Denson Comedy, as you see right here. Da, 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 Hank Denson Comedy. If you can't find me under that on any Instagram, social media platform, you can put in your search engine hashtag pay teachers more money in your search engine. It brings up all my information. I do have a comedy special coming out next month called Paying Different. Um, you'll see it on all different platforms, XM Series, Radio iTunes. Pray for me, support me, because I'm shopping it. I wanted to do some on I wanted to do some big video things. Um, but it's okay. It's okay if it don't, but you gotta see this comedy special. It is a, a coming of Hank Denson on this new level after pandemic. And I tell anybody in here, love, love to laugh because that's all you have. They are slapping comedians, but love to laugh regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that has been another episode of Candid Kisses TV. We drop every Monday. We go live on Wednesday and on Thursday. We drop um, episodes every week. So make sure you follow, like, subscribe, comment. We are on streaming platforms, iHeartRadio, all that good stuff. So Google it. You know what? You know what I'm saying. And you know what I told you earlier. If I don't want to fuck nobody up, but you don't want to have to fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to have to fuck nobody up. But we will if we have to. We will. If we... That's the Aquarius. I'm I'm very very nice, but don't put your hands on me. Uh, that part. Because <laughs> if I go like this, like people be like, you can't see. No, I'm about to kick your ass. That's it. If I if I slowly start removing items. Yeah. People, people ask me like, why do you go to the gym? Just in case. Yeah. My cousin called me like, hey, you think somebody gonna walk up? And try to. I said, there ain't no, there ain't nobody <laughs> trying to. Dude, I'm waiting for a fight. I've been waiting. Like I've been waiting. Oh reps. I'm oh really God, don't, okay. hey, don't be, don't let it be one of the drought. <laughs> don't let it be one of them drought weeks where my wife is like, mm -mm, no, I'm, man, Ooh. please. I had a comedy show the other day. My wife was like, let's do it real quick. I'm like, mm -mm, I'm gonna need my legs. Need my legs. <laughs> just in case I gotta beat somebody's ass in here, I'm gonna need my legs. What you gonna need you your legs? You can't, you can't serve them like you need to if you have that, that leg weak. <laughs> I you. you. know, fights is only five seconds, so I need to be like, oh, no. ooh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Your legs is weak. You're like, oh, man. Oh, I should have told her to get on top. <laughs> <laughs> Candid Kisses TV is sponsored by Singadoo. Did you do it today? Singadoo. Sing 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 you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it like this? Can you do it real quick? Go get it. Go get it. Pick a card up. Pick your genre up. Can you do it right? You're gonna wanna bruh. It's first to 21. We'll get the job done. So grab your friends and fam. Cause it's a lot of fun. Some do it with some
class, but make it real fast. Cause time is kinda tricky. Can you do it in six Let's go. Get your copy today at singadoo.com. Guess what? Candid Kisses TV has merch. That's right. You can find it at artistperiod.com. We have everything you need. We have hoodies. We have coffee mugs. We even have throw pillows and beach towels for the summer. <laughs> get it right. Keep it tight. Listen, everything you need to get your drip right, artistperiod.com has it for you. That's A-R-T-I-S-T-P-E-R-I-O-D.com. Get your drip right with artistperiod.com and Candid Kisses TV. Make sure you get it today. Candid Kisses TV is brought to you by Kissable Lips Cosmetics. You can be kissed without kissable lips. Shop kissablelipscosmetics.com today for all your beauty needs. <laughs>